Early morning golf is the best. I'm gonna let you go first, because a couple weeks ago, I had to go behind Phil Nicholson, and he hit his tee farther than I hit my ball, and now that's gonna happen again, and I'm gonna be ticked off. I don't think so. Smooth swing. Dang. Turn a little. Why does that go straight? I've never seen a ball go That's straight. That's what it's supposed to do. 25 years, huh? 25 years. You're getting younger, I'm getting older. Don't you sometimes still feel though like you're one of the kids? You do. I do. That's the one great thing about college, don't you think? Yes. Rip it down the middle. Down the middle. So how's the 25 years been in your mind? Fast. Yeah. I know, that's, that's what I say too, it has I, gone fast. I think about like the freshmen coming in and I've been coaching for longer than they've been alive. Damn, you don't have to make us feel that old. <laughs> At the same time, I think the great thing for both of us, we've kind of withstood the test of time, you know? Yes. Of all the things you wanted to do when you started, you wanted to win championships, you want to win a national championship. But didn't you want to look at it? I want to consistently be knocking on the door. Yes. But even win a Big Ten champ, it, it's so hard. I tell you, I, I don't think people appreciate how hard that is. I saw one of your quotes was, I want to have a good team, not just. I want know, to have a good program, not just a good team. Good team, a right? good program. Yeah. Not just every once in a while, every year. That was always motivating for me, thinking that's what I want too. God, that was a nice swing. Sit, sit, sit. Oh, nice shot, Stace. Thanks. So why do you think the last 10 years, you've kind of even upped your game a little more? I think it's just like that slow climb of like, we just keep getting better and better and better. I think, uh, you know, our international players have been, have been key. You know, we kind of got a good Spanish connection right now. Any seven footers while you're over there? I haven't seen any yet. I'll let you know. Jeez. There you go. He is coachable. Good shot. Maybe I should be your caddy. Tell you what, man. By the second hole, I'm, I might be giving you a run for your money. Maybe we should have done this like 25 years ago. <laughs> for me, yeah. <laughs> You kept it on the high side, but you're a little short, a little so. Short. Yep. Would you be running the steps for that, or well, how do they um, do that in golf? Well, luckily my players don't make me do that. <laughs> okay. You're an inch off of the middle. Ticks me off. Wow, nice shot. So how do you do that when you think maybe my team's not quite good enough, but you don't want to change the standards? I don't, I try not to think that it. my team's not yeah. quite good enough because yeah. right now, when I think about this year's meeting and who's going to be sitting in my locker room, two kids, two kids that have made it to the semis the last two years, Ooh. one of them's ranked 50th. I got 50th. chills when you say yeah. that. <laughs> but I think to me and, you know, watching you and what you say and, you know, then the papers and your press conferences, I mean, I think you've always got to shoot for the stars. Yeah. And I think that watching Valentina and Valerie the last two years and then James yesterday, I think the most important thing is to know that we can do it. Yeah. And, and I think that, you know, not believing that we can win a national championship or the Big Ten championship again, you know, that's the biggest fault. And I always say when we're in the weight room, you know, a lot of times I feel like your mind stops your body from what you can do. Oh yeah. And if you can allow your mind to really believe that, you know, we can win the national championship this year, we can win another Big Ten championship this year, the sky's really the limit. And I think from what we've done in the past two years, just in those two U.S. amateurs, I think that we're going to have a group of believers in the men's program and the women's program. Nope. Smooth. Eh, middle to the right. She's human! There you go. The nice thing is we have this all documented. Damn. We have this all documented. That was pretty good. How in the hell do you get that many girls to be so good academically? <laughs> huh? Is that in recruiting? Yeah. Is that something you guys do? Do you make a concerted effort? We tell recruits this is how we recruit, in order. 
character, grades, and talent. That's culture, man. It's like our guys. We had that one team. Those seniors didn't make it to a Final Four, and we got to the Elite Eight and got beat. But nobody wanted to be that team because that's the culture of things. That's, that's the hardest thing to get and the greatest thing that we both have had, I yes. think. Nice shot. Oh. Not bad. No, that was really good. Guy got a saying all the time that you got to drag people with you, you know? I mean, what, are, are those girls ones that would just go out on their own or would they? Oh, no. Yeah. I mean, the two of them were two of them that drove 10 hours yesterday to go watch James. They went there? Four of them Wow. Did. That says a lot about your programs, and that says a lot about your women, that they're program people. I love that. Absolutely love it. Spartan family. Ooh. Not bad, huh? That was pretty good. Turn a little. My amazement with you is the no excuse thing. I always say, well, it's a northern sport, and you have really disregarded that totally, you know? And when we recruit every single player, we tell them that there are no excuses here. And you say we, that right off the right off, right the, off the get go. You got 105 from there, so like 115. This is, by the way, one of the toughest shots in golf, just so you know. It no is? excuses, but I'm just saying. Okay. There you go. I actually needed a little bit more behind it, didn't I? I mean, that was a turner outer, but that wasn't a golf shot. Yeah, but that doesn't matter because that's close. And that worked out, and that's like, that's just the name of the game. Well, do me a favor, see if you can put yours closer than mine. I don't know. That's pretty good, Tom. And I hit the tree. Damn, that shot was a little better. Guys, get that, get the shot, man. Look where I am. <laughs> you kidding me? That was a good shot. You ain't going to see that very often And we now. better we better have it on camera noted that that was from a 120 yards uh, bunker. That wasn't just a, any old pitch shot. Oh. She Tom Izzo'd it. That was a lot of sand there. Nice shot. Thanks. Damn. We're going to have to do this more often. I'm telling you, man, I could be good at this. What was the first Big Ten championship you won? What year? 2001. You win in 2000, we won 2001. So I'm one-upping you, come to think of it. You did it in four, I did it in three. So how do you look at scheduling in that respect? Well, we're playing against the best teams in the country every week. I mean, that's our goal. Every place that we're at, every tournament we go to, I want to play against the best teams in the country. I can make a schedule where we can win every single yeah, tournament. no question. But what's the point of that? And I said, I'd rather go get our butts whipped and have our kids learn, learn it. what it takes yeah. rather than just, you know, going and playing easy tournaments. And I can tell you that is I always wanted to follow in your footsteps of, you know, you started winning, I saw, and this is my school. And I wanted nothing more than to have this golf program be the best in the country. As George Perlis used to say, I've never walk the walkways, I've never been in the classrooms. The cool thing of you is you've done that and that means the world to you. And I, I think we lose that a little bit, you know, that, that sometimes we, we don't play for the school. Yes. And, and I think you always have. Oh, yes. And I think that's why your 25 years have been so good. And well, one of the things I am getting a little nervous about is those six out of 10 Big Ten championships, you're catching me and you're going to surpass me. But of all the people that I'd want to be surpassed by, you're one. Well, thank you. Love you. Love you, too. And just so you know, we are coming after you. <laughs> God, even on a nice day of golf, relaxing, <laughs> she turns up the heat, man. I can't ever, I can't relax ever at this place because of her, but I love her for it.
We are headed over to the Westside YMCA and we're pretty much summer camp counselors for the day. <laughs> and yeah, we're working with the nine through 12 year olds. So it's gonna be a little bit more interesting. They like to talk more. In general, the YMCA's kind of idea about us is that we're not summer camp counselors, is we're role models all the time. And one of the first things that they tell you when you're kind of applying and you're doing your interview is that you're not in this for the money, you're in it for the kids and for the community and all these different things that um, I didn't know I wanted to be a part of until I was a part of it. And so like while being an athlete is such a, I, I love it and it's a platform that I wouldn't give up for anything, I, I kind of enjoy being this person that these kids get to look up to in addition to being an athlete. So it's not that I'm an athlete and they look up to me, it's that I'm this person that they look up to and then I happen to be an athlete at Michigan State. Talia is a builder. We don't call ourselves counselors here because counselors to kids sometimes seems like, oh, I'm going here to talk about my problems. So we use the term builders. Uh, I'm gonna be in the news. <laughs> so we're building positive role models for children. Oh, 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 this is a good matchup. Emma! Oh, nice, Emma. Girl power! <laughs> Girl power. Oh, Autumn, you're hanging in there! Darnell's not trying, Darnell's not trying. <laughs> I think having a counselor like Talia has been really great. She's been very interactive with her kids, very patient with her kids, and she's kept them busy, kept them active, and I think she's been really great to have. It definitely takes patience, yeah. <laughs> Talia! 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 Is this a setup? Talia! What? She's always smiling, she's always engaged. The kids love her. Since day one, they've loved her. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Ugh. Especially coming after COVID, where kids don't really know a lot of other people. She's definitely another role model that these kids can lean on. Listen, eyes and ears on me so I can explain the game. Explain the game. All right, we're doing giant ring toss. The hula hoops are your rings, the cones are what you're trying to toss them onto. Oh, nice. Two points. Ooh, ah! <laughs> oh, heads up. Is she someone that's easy to look up to? Yeah. How come? Because she's very nice and kind, and she knows how to treat people with respect. She helps you if you're feeling down, and she like gets you back up. And she's funny. She's sweet. She's um, nice to play with a lot. Camp wouldn't be without fun without her. <laughs> Amaya, you are so fast. Oh wow. I had to put the wheels on. You put them in sports mode? We did it! We did it. He looks like a minion. <laughs> she's really fun when we play in the gym. Like, she's really fast too. Like she's hard Super to get. Supersonic. <laughs> no! Not you two. You guys are quick. <laughs> I should be on the track team. Getting to work here has been so awesome. I couldn't have asked for a better internship, but also better people to be working with and around. Like everybody here is so, so great and we all share similar passions and that's doing this for the kids and being there for the kids. I didn't know that she was a volleyball player. I didn't know she was athletic because she jumps over the fence to get balls. She never told us. And literally we just found out today. Were you surprised? Yes. For Talia to keep her being a volleyball player a secret shows that she wanted to put the kids first and not herself first because a lot of people, they will say, oh, I play this and I do this, and it takes away from the kids and it, it doesn't let them know who you really are. And so to keep that a secret for as long as she did was great because they got to know her as Talia and not as Talia the volleyball player for MSU. Oh my gosh, I feel like it's very awesome to be with a volleyball player. I've never been with like an actual person that plays sports and be like able to actually connect for like a long time instead of like talking for like five seconds. It's a lot better than that and it's like a lot cooler. I guess I think my time is about like two minutes. <laughs> oh my god, you almost did. Oh, you already know I can solve it. It just takes me a minute. Was that, was that 
After you do it, can I do it? It's not. What? After I do it, yeah, I'll give it to you. It's definitely, I think, refreshing from the really, really fast-paced, busy life that being a student athlete is. None of it feels like a job to me. It doesn't feel like something that I have to be doing. This has been a really nice touch to kind of like my senior summer, and I just feel so fortunate to be able to, one, have this opportunity at Michigan State that I have to play volleyball, and then, two, having this opportunity, not just the experience of working with kids, but kind of getting to know them as people and helping them out and being a role model for them. <laughs> right behind it. Good evening, everybody. It's a beautiful night for a football game. About 60 degrees, clear skies, and they're striping the stadium tonight, alternating green and white sections. And this is a big, big game for both of these teams, the Spartans and the Cornhuskers of Nebraska. You are for real. I told you in the beginning of the year, we have a good football team. You need to get that first hit in and let him know it's going to be like this for 60 minutes. I want to see relentless finish and extreme effort and knocking guys back and finishing on top. There is juice, there is buzz. This is a big one and maybe the biggest one the Spartans have had here at home in a couple of years. Ball's at the 18-yard line of Nebraska. Martinez there you go. being rushed and he's sacked for the 12th time this season. The Spartans get him on the first snap. Jake Ponishuk and Drew Beasley. Third down and five. The ball's at the 29-yard line of Nebraska. Thorne has Kenneth Walker behind him in the pistol. Option to the right, a toss back to Kenneth, and he is knocked down hard at the 25-yard line. Tough sledding for both teams against some huh. very physical defense. On third and eight, pressure coming. Martinez in trouble, and down he goes. Back to the five-yard line. Provaris Crouch and Drew Beasley get home and Martinez set. Thorne on the shotgun, snap back. Hand off to Walker, flea flicker, throws it back to Peyton Thorne. Throwing it deep middle, it's caught over the shoulder in the end zone. Jaden Reed, touchdown MSU. The flea flicker, George, strikes again. Kicking unit is on, and here comes Matt Coughlin. This one from 26 yards. And it's good, inside the left upright. Martinez up the middle. Martinez stretching into the end zone. Touchdown, Nebraska. Pete Thorne. With Simmons behind him in the pistol. Play fakes to Simmons. Looking downfield. Throws left side. Whoa. Great grab by Connor Hayward. Whoa. Runs over one Husker. And now another. Oh, my goodness. He's on his feet to the 10-yard line of Nebraska. That looked like a little Ironhead Hayward right there. Big body. That's 250. Move it. That's 250. Move it. A 27-yard try here for Coughlin. And the field goal by Matt Coglin makes it the Spartans 13, Nebraska 10. Everybody loves the electric atmosphere here, but it's anybody's ball game. 13-13 as we get set to start the fourth. Martinez running oh, to his left. Nobody home. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, Nebraska. This is kind of a program-defining drive or finish to this game for both of these teams. And Mel Tucker's team hasn't been in this spot yet this season. Daniel Cherney from Canberra, Australia, comes on to punt. Oh, he gets a good foot into this one. Dayton Reed, though, with a run-up catch. Green grass in front of him. He's at midfield. He's at 40. The 35 to 30. Jayden Reed inside yeah. the 20. Inside the 10. Into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU. Wow. Just like that, George. Lightning in a bottle. Jayden Reed makes play. With 27 seconds to go. In regulation, Martinez in trouble, and down he goes. 
Jeff Petrowski. All tied at 20. Four quarters, not enough to decide this one tonight. Martinez is by himself. Snap back. Quick pick, the right side. Pick, Intercepted. Pick. It's picked off. The Spartans the house, get a baby. pick. They're going to the house. It's Chester Kimbrell down the left sideline. And oh. he's finally ganged down. Wildcat Walker takes the snap. Room. Walker. Feet stretching down near the one. Let's go! Here comes the man with a leg, Matt Coglin, to try and win it. Perfect snap. The put down. The kick is, is up. The kick is Walker. good. Spartans yes, win in overtime. What a night in East Lansing. Oh, no, 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 no,